do you have any heretical beliefs about consciousness that people in the space would strongly disagree with or think are unfounded, yet you have some degree of conviction in? Yes. All right. If people are interested in this, I have a more long form presentation of a, of a talk I gave at the in Thunder Bay at the Conference on Consciousness and Conscience. Mm -hmm. I talk about the three questions mm -hmm. of consciousness. And so the first question is the question everybody's really fixated on, which is the nature question, which is how is something that seems so non-physical, how does it possibly exist in the otherwise physical universe? And that's the nature question. And of course, you have Chalmers version of the hard problem and qualia and things like that. And I'll come back to qualia in a second. Now, there's another question, which is as equally important, and, and people don't give it enough attention, and they should. And this is the function question, which is, what is consciousness for? What does it do? And before you give me an answer, let me try and make this more problematic to you. <laughs> you do a lot of very, very sophisticated stuff without consciousness. You are taking the noises coming out of my face hole and translating them into ideas in your mind, and you have no idea how that process works. You have no introspective access to it, right? Right. I make noises. You have ideas. What's happening in between? Don't know. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Or think about the, the complex, sophisticated action you can do, how little attention you have to bring to walking, or even, and you've had this, I no doubt, probably, highway hypnotism where you've been driving and, and you realize for the past 50, I haven't been paying attention to the road at all. Mm -hmm. And yet the, this, sort of this sort of zombie inside me has been managing me to keep me on the road. And, this, right? and I wouldn't rely on it or anything, but you did, right? So the question is, we seem to be able to, our unconscious seems to be so powerful. What, why do we have consciousness? What's it do? And why do we love it so much? Yeah. Right? And then the third question is the meta question. What's the relationship between these questions? Mm -hmm. So here's my first heresy. Unlike many people, I think these two questions have to be answered in a completely integrated fashion. I think trying to answer the nature question without answering the function question is doomed to fail. And I think trying to answer the function question without trying to answer the nature question is doomed to fail. So there's the first Vervakian heresy. And I don't know... Who who's going to be devil's advocate for me. But anyways, oh no, that'd be the opposite. That'd be the person putting me on trial. <laughs> so that's the first. Here's the second. The second is we can do this. We can find a way of answering this if we pay attention to a convergence that is occurring about what is the function of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then I think this gives us a lot of the machinery for explaining a lot of the qualia that are so central to the nature of consciousness. Qualia being? Qualia means the subjective feel, the redness of red to you. It's not mm -hmm. just, you're not just unconsciously reacting to wavelengths. You're having this experience of redness. That's a qualia. And that seems to be something in consciousness. And it's subjective in nature. And we don't even know if your qualia and my qualia are the same, right? Well, very often they're not, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, Japan is a good example of that, right? I mean, they're like green and blue are not the same green and blue that we see, depending on, you know, the, the, the crosswalk go signals and so on. And even a person who's colorblind, right, has yep. different qualia. Or as Thomas Nagel famously argued, bats who use echolocation have qualia that we don't have. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, so that's what that means, and that's the hard problem, because there doesn't seem to be any way of explaining their nature. But I think if you get into, and this is work I'm doing with a whole bunch of other people, so I don't, I don't want to take sole credit, but I think if you make use of functionality and you make use of the four kinds of knowing and things like this, I think you can give an integrated answer. There is a consensus emerging, and I've published on this and talked about this, around what consciousness does, what's it for. And then I think once you get that and you open up that functionality, you actually get a phenomenology. You get an, you get an explanation of the experience out of that. Mm -hmm. So the converging thing is that 
what consciousness is for, and it overlaps with attention and working memory and fluid intelligence. Think about when you're driving on the highway, when do you come back to it? If there's something unexpected happens, or there's a really complex situation suddenly emerging, or there's an ill-defined problem that you're not quite sure how to formulate and frame, that's what you need consciousness for. So what is consciousness? It's this higher order relevance realization. It's about re-realizing what's relevant and important so that you can deal with the added challenge of zeroing in on relevant information that is given to you by novelty, complexity, and ill-definedness. That's what mm -hmm. consciousness is for. It's this it's enhanced relevance realization. And that's why it overlaps with working memory and things like that. Now, that does sound like a consciousness that would extend to animals other than humans. Totally. It helps to explain our intuition about this. Mm -hmm. Generally, when people are willing to extend the attribution of consciousness, they actually do it in a way without realizing that tracks how much fluid intelligence do they think that organism has. Hmm. Because fluid intelligence, working memory, attention, all of these things are about relevance realization and enhancing it. Hmm. And so you've got this consensus. Okay, now let's say we get relevance realization and that consciousness is a higher order version. What about qualia? Well, first of all, let's divide qualia, and this is, this is the second Verveke heresy. Let's divide qualia into two kinds of qualia. There's the typical qualia that philosophers love to talk about, the adjectival qualia, like blueness and greenness and sweetness. But there are adverbial qualia. There are qualias of hereness, nowness, togetherness of my experience. I'm here, I'm now. My experience is together. There's a unity and a here now presence, uh, presencing of consciousness, the adverbial. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Talk to people who have engaged in long term meditative practice. And this is well documented. Read Foreman for the documentation. I've, I've, I've been here in this state, and you get into a state called the pure consciousness event. You're not conscious of anything. You're definitely not conscious of any quality. You're not conscious of any thought. You're not even conscious of consciousness. You're just conscious. You don't black out. You're just conscious. You, all you have is a pure, perspectival, participatory knowing of conscious. You're, you're conscious by being conscious, and there's nothing else going on. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting about that is you, you don't black out because you can remember being there in that state. There's no adjectival qualia but consciousness is still present. So think about that for a second. But what doesn't go away? You don't lose, you don't lose the here-ness because people say in the pure consciousness event, I was fully, there's full presence, right? You don't lose nowness. They talk about, I'm in eternity, this pure nowness. And they don't talk, they don't lose togetherness. They talk about pure oneness and unity. The adverbial qualia are on steroids, and the adjectival qualia have gone away. Yeah, that's interesting. It's a good way to put it. The adjectival qualia are not necessary, and I, there's other arguments, they're not sufficient for consciousness. Consciousness is primarily about adverbial qualia, and adverbial qualia can be explained by relevance realization. It's how are things relevant to you? That gives you a cent the centeredness to consciousness. How the timing of things is an important part of relevance. How things belong together, fit together, that's relevance realization gives you the adverbial qualia. Mm -hmm. So if you understand the functionality of consciousness as heightening relevance realization, it will be present in all of those adverbial qualia, and there will be a sense of those even being heightened when you're in a pure consciousness state. That's mm -hmm. the third and last Verveke heresy. Oh. So it's a completely naturalistic explanation of consciousness.